derivatives of inverse functions. They all are handled the same way. First let's review what the graph of a function is. This is a technical term and it means only one thing. Input horizontal, output vertical, and you collect together all the points of the function. So it's all ordered pairs where the y-coordinate is the function value. And we just say y equals f of x next to it for short. Now I can think of the action of the function though as going from the horizontal to the vertical. I don't need a formula, a graph is the function. So the inverse function undoes it so it just goes backwards. The inverse function takes y as an input and gives you x as an output. Function and its inverse. For the graph of the inverse function, the input variable must be horizontal. The output variable is vertical. So I just flip the axes. There's the graph of the inverse function. It's the exact same points, it's the exact same everything. I just flip the axes. So now the action of the function is the right way for the graph. Let's put our calculus schematic in and do the same thing. There's our function, but now we know its slope. The slope is the ratio of the differentials. Flip the axes to get the graph of the inverse function. So everything is exactly the same, just horizontal and vertical have been swapped. So x is the inverse function. So its derivative is the slope. But from the differentials, we already know the slope. It's dx dy, which is the reciprocal of what we just did. Filling in the exponential function into the schematic we just did. The natural log is its inverse. So the derivative of the natural log is dx dy, which is the reciprocal of the one we know. Now all that remains is the input variable should be y, not x. Done. The derivative of natural log is 1 over. Let's do the same thing with the sine function. And we'll just set up the whole thing from the scratch. So the sine function and its inverse. Plotting my calculus schematic. I know the slope of the sine function, its cosine, and it's also the ratio of differentials. Flip the axes. This is the graph of the inverse function. Y is the variable for the inverse. So the inverse function of Y is my function. Its derivative is the slope, which is dx dy, the reciprocal of what we just did. I just have to turn x's into y's, and now it's a function of y. As an alternate notation for trig inverse trig, you can always collapse it to an algebraic, in this case 1 minus y squared. To refresh your memory how that happens, that's just the Pythagorean theorem. I can write cosine in terms of sine. I know it's the plus square root because inverse sine 
is a quadrant 1, 4, and cosine's positive there. I plug in theta equals inverse sine y, and there's the result.